Pennzoil at the half. Sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Pennzoil at the half. Our score at halftime in Auburn Hills, the Michigan State Spartans with a three point lead, 34 31 on Iowa State. I'm Greg Gumbel in New York, along with Clark Kellogg and Coach Bobby Crimmins. A lot of strange numbers in the first half, not the least of which Michigan State leading 16 6 points in the paint. You say there's a reason for that. I, I believe Coach Izzo has made a defensive adjustment. I believe he has a collapse in defense, which takes away Tinsley's penetration, and the double teaming collapsing on Pfizer. Pfizer, six points. Tinsley, no assists. Iowa State's got to make some jumpers to take them out of that defense. Clark. I think the key for Iowa State, if you're Michigan State, you've got to feel good. You've taken away the two primary objectives. You've, you've accomplished that with the penetration and Pfizer. Foul trouble kept them off the floor. I think Pfizer has to be more of a big-time presence in the second half for Iowa State to have a chance. Even though they trail just by three, you get the feeling that Michigan State has good control of this game. All right, Clark, Bobby, one team has already punched its ticket to the Final Four in Indianapolis. Earlier today here on CBS, you watched Wisconsin knock off Purdue 64-60. to Take a look at the Badgers. Do any Duaney with a nice feed to Andy Kowski sends it home. The Badgers led by three. Let's go to the hop. <laughs> the Purdue boy and the Boilermaker is going to get their last lead here. Cardinal going to get two of his second half 13 points. 50 49 Boilermaker. Watch Kowski take the nice feed from John Bryant. Nice move inside for the score. The Badgers on top by two. They won it by four. Coach Dick Bennett after the game. I feel indescribably happy, but. There's a big part of uh, what's inside of me that feels uh, for Coach Katie, and um, um, they have my undying respect. Well, we just try to play great basketball, and if that gets you the Final Four, great. If not, uh, you know, you, you move on. You know how hard it is. Uh, if, uh, if that bothers a coach, he probably ought to get out of it, because uh, there's only four going out of 315. How about that University of Wisconsin? They win the Rose Bowl. They lay claim to the Heisman Trophy winner. Their hockey team has a chance to go to the Final Four, and now their basketball team is on their way to Indianapolis. A reminder, tomorrow we're back on the road to the Final Four show at 2 Eastern, followed by the South Regional Final between North Carolina and Tulsa that tips at 2.40 Eastern time. Then it's the East Regional Final between Florida and Oklahoma State. The tip time there is 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 on the West Coast. Earlier today, we spoke with North Carolina head coach Bill Guthridge and asked him how he coped with all of the criticism the Tar Heels endured during the regular season. To this evening, thanks for watching Penn's Oil at the half. Will it be Michigan State or Iowa State going to the Final Four? 20 minutes of basketball will tell us. We'll send you back to Auburn Hills for the second half right after this. Penn's Oil at the half has been sponsored by Penn's Oil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Penn's Oil. Hi, Armin Katayan back in Auburn Hills with Michigan State with a slight 38-36 edge. Larry Eustace, you told me at halftime, Michigan State is the toughest team we've had to play this year, guarding, guarding them wise. He also said the reason we've had so many turnovers, we just can't run our offense effectively. And then when Tom Izzo came by, he grabbed me. He said, you know, Armin, the reason we got out rebounded 2-1 to one was they put so many guys on my bench. Or in reference to the fact that Michigan State had 12 fouls in the first half, Iowa State just six. Vern? All right, Armin, 15-58 to go in this one, and Tinsley will inbound now for Iowa State. And, and, and Armin uh, and Vern as well, the ability to dribble, that's what he recruits, Larry Eustace. Guys that, when the offense doesn't work, you beat with the dribble. Well, kind of that Michigan State's playing that dribble drive beautifully. Now Nurse. Michigan State in the zone. Nope. Yeah, a little matchup. Yep. Exchange of people. This guy you got to identify. Nurse is a terrific deep shooter. Rebound Andre Hudson, who stays on the floor with three fouls. 15.40 to go in regulation. Winner goes to Indianapolis and takes on Wisconsin. Well, they need Mo P involved a little bit more. I mean, he just hasn't again. They're going to go deep. That's the hook. Likes the hook from here. Now go fade away. All right. I'm sure Tom will take it. I'm sure Pfizer's saying, well, you can have that one. Andre Hudson is five of six from the field. Ten points. Now, Ken, they should go at Hudson with Pfizer because if Hudson's out of the game, it's a different offense right now for Michigan State. Pfizer pops out top of the key, and he'll try and take Hudson off the dribble. Kicks it outside to Nurse. Pretty good answer. And what a wonderful dribble drive to set up the kick. The pinch had to occur. Nurse wide open. Michael Nurse with his third three-pointer foul away from the ball. Tinsley down there, just a tough matchup. 
matchup for Mo Peterson. How about this? The defense, John Bell tries to help, but you're taught and just can't react because Pfizer's such a load going to the 10. Both teams go to their bench. A.J. Granger back on the floor now for Tom Izzo in Michigan State. And Paul Shirley, the junior from Meriden, Kansas, is on the floor for Iowa State. Inbound pass, Mike Chappelle, who's also here, number 20. Shirley guards Granger. And, and right now, Peterson's got Pfizer. He should come away from the rim. Take Pfizer away and beat him with that. They're going to go inside with him. Up and under. Shirley, Granger, Tinsley has it for Iowa State. Kicks it back outside. Nurse for three. Shirley, offensive board. Passes on the shot. Up and under, off the glass, no. And oh. another hustle rebound. What a wow! Bad foot and all. He was a factor two days ago. Again, terrific response around the goal. First team academic, all Big 12. Paul Shirley, mechanical engineering. The only time they're tough is in the timeout. Well, what a blessing for Larry Eustacey to get the big fella back. I mean, the first one he knew he wasn't getting, but how about the gather? His aggressive play, a little nice kiss delivery at the end, uh, but able to take the hit. And Granger with nice body work, kept himself tall. Mo Peterson down there to assist. Uh, they're really struggling on the glass, aren't they, Michigan State? Yes, indeed. Paul Shirley picks up the foul, and we've got an elbow thrown. I think it was Shirley, but Shirley and Anagonye are. It's, it's the first oh, one Al got going his way. And a quick two fouls on Paul Shirley. Four team fouls on Iowa State. Well, you can see the tape work. They just took away that double screen for Peterson. Paused the timeout. Are they going to say a five second violation? Wow. Tried to call the time. It was too late. That just the sixth turnover for Michigan State. Cyclones lead the Spartans by one. Nice little duck in, Shirley couldn't have big out. Nice job rooting him out. Pfizer, guarded by Granger, establishes low post position. Here comes the double from Andy Gagne. And a clean block from Morris Peterson. Wonderful. A little high low that dive to the tin by Shirley, negated by a great individual effort. Granger knocks Pfizer backwards and misses with an air ball. Out of bounds. Spartan basketball. Or the level of involvement, the intensity. Getting a little deeper right now. Just sensational reactions. Tom signaling the four across. They had trouble getting the last one in. Granger for three. Cantrell Horton with a rebound. And look at this lob to the box. Two Pfizer five. got it. Boy, he just nails you with the derriere. Painful. Tinsley again with the small change. Unnecessary. But this big fella, the strength to discard and now initiate the contact. He can move nations with that backside. Tinsley picks up his third foul. He has to go to the bench. Brandon Hawkins, the freshman from Fontana, California, takes his spot. Cleaves quickly. Pfizer rebound. And a 28 to 13 rebounding edge for Iowa State. And a Gagne guarding Pfizer now. And just ducking in on the bye. Look at Granger sniffing around the help. This right, he sure is. Drops off Shirley. Now Shirley in the low box. And see how they lift now. And try and get Shirley to duck in. Pfizer for three. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. What a mismatch that far from the goal. And Gagne, very uncomfortable. Disarmed that deep. They took advantage. This is when Cleves likes to do the damage. Nice drive draw, but they're not kicking or making them. Another big rebound from Paul Shirley. Here come the Cyclones on a 10-0 run. 
up by six as we hit 12 minutes. And Marcus Pfizer really drawing deep press. He is tired, We're reaching back right now. Anna Gagne. Four fouls on Aloysius Anagonye. Well, Big Al having his problems, but you got a guy like Pfizer. He says, give me your bigs. I'll bring them away from the rib. The smalls I'll bring inside. Knock it down, big fella. Nylon. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by 1-800-COLLECT. Honda Motorcycles, the Intel Pentium 3 processor, and by Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. 10-0 Iowa State run has given them a six-point lead with 11.50 to go. Let's uh, bring you up to date on this amazing NCAA tournament. Only one number one seed in the Elite Eight, and they trail by six right now. Wisconsin's in the final four for the first time since I was in diapers. <laughs> and it's the most losses ever by a final four time team. Iowa State is trying to get into the final four since the first time since Bill was in diapers. Mm -hmm. 1944. Respecting my age. <laughs> and right now the big fella. Pfizer got it. He's got a runner. He's got a low. He's got a deep. You name it. And right now it's between Cleves time. The mental toughness has to exhibit itself right now, Vern. Largest lead of the ball game. Eight points for the Cyclones. Pfizer out on Granger. Back it comes to Cleves. Kicks it outside. Offensive foul. He was a little out of control. And part of it, I think, was the defensive play by Michael Nurse. Got him to run. And then the kick didn't jump stop. And that's the problem. Right now, Larry Eustace, defensively, they're stepping up. They're gathering as the... Dribble drive turns the corner. Charlie Bell gets a rest, joins Tom Izzo. Mo Peterson is back on the floor. Mateen Cleaves has picked up his third. And what they like to do is spread the floor on a four corner, Vern. I'm not, I don't think they're doing it right now, but they've got perimeter people who can drive. They're still in their set. Marcus Spicer, 13 points. By Hudson, off the glass, got the roll, no. And a rebounding foul is going to be called on Iowa State. I don't know if it was Shirley again. He got three quickies. Pretty move by the big guy again. Just couldn't get it to go down. 16 fouls on Iowa State. Michigan State with five. Cleves and Granger. Mo Peterson. Hudson. First duck in they've had. What a job. Now that's what they've got to do. Run their sets, and that's Shirley's fourth, I believe, right? Wow. You can see the problem that Michigan State is having. They're trying to go for it early. If they could just run their sets, occasionally reverse it, I think they can get the ball where they want. And that time, Andre Hudson just reacts beautiful with the duck in. Fourth foul on Shirley. Shoots one more. Surely will rest. Stevie Johnson on the floor for Paul Shirley. He's made them a little deeper with Rancic uh, coming in. I mean, we know their guard rotation with Hawkins, but all of a sudden he's just a little bit deeper. Two free throws from Hudson stops a four minute scoreless drop for Michigan State. 48-42, Hawkins. They're going for the big guy with Hudson down there. Granger doing a nice job. See if they double, Vern. Yes, they do. Loose ball, chased down by Brandon Hawkins. Speed to the pit. Hawkins comes back outside. Jamal Tinsley has been on the bench for three minutes now with three fouls. Three guys sniffing around down there with Cleves. Into the corner. Back outside. Six on the shot clock. Way outside. Rebound, Mo Pete. 
And look at the defensive balance, the red shirts. Pfizer battles Andre Hudson. Ooh, nice little play by Hudson. Oh, my goodness. Pfizer tried to get the official's attention with a Pratt ball. He's too big <laughs> to induce that kind of thinking. Well, you need guys to step up. Tom Izzo loves guys that play a lot of sports. This is a high school quarterback with the discard and the ability to finish. He likes that turnaround to the left with the hook. And there's probably the best cheerleader in the country for the first month of the season in December, Mateen Cleaves, and now providing that lift on the floor. You wanted aggression? Oh. <laughs> well, now, you know, Pfizer not getting the blow. Fatigue becomes important, I think, and they should just go to him with Hudson on him. Hudson's a factor at the other end, Bird. Five unanswered by Michigan State. Horton, quick move in the lane. I think they got Richardson way outside. Jason with the hand check. I'm not sure. No basket. Richardson is called for the foul. Sunday, April 9th on CBS, Richard Dreyfus, Brian Dennehy, Harvey Keitel, Noah Wiley, and George Clooney star in an unprecedented live television event. Fail safe Sunday, April 9th on CBS. Cyclones by three. A boy, the great trap because he can't step through Pfizer. A steal by Cleves. Two on two. Jumper. Another rebound for Iowa State. And Johnson hustled back. Now Granger inside, maybe not as good with the footwork. Physically, Pfizer more imposing. Tensley back on the floor. That was a settle. Little quick. Use number five. You gotta love him if he's on your side. Pfizer. Pass inside to Granger, who's guarded by Stevie Johnson. Brady Carl. Oh, my goodness. Hudson. Hudson misses from point blank range. Andre too deep. Pfizer. Cantrell Horton says, let's settle it down. Now, that last trip showed a lot of fatigue by Iowa State. They didn't handle the offensive set by Michigan State. Very short bench. Pfizer. Nope. Now that's two jumpers and I just think Michigan State if they run a little action reverse it they may get an easier shot don't settle quickly there's the back cut there's the loop they got for Hudson on the other side and a foul away from the ball in the lane I believe they got Michael Nurse his second well, you run a great play. Here's the dive to the goal. It just maybe caught too far underneath, Vern. And obviously, when you got Marcus Pfizer looming, you get a little concerned. Iowa State has called a timeout. This is a 30-second timeout. Larry Eustace calls one of his 30-second timeouts, and he will get a full television timeout coming up shortly. He was telling us that fatigue has not been a problem for Iowa State because of the length of the television timeouts. Well, it's easy for him to say. Yeah. Now, I agree with him, but they didn't sit down. Pfizer stayed up, but they get that TV timeout the next stoppage, and he'll get that 2.30 to relax, and not, you know, he's taking advantage of it. You want that star studded performer on the floor. Larry Eustace said he doesn't have enough to say during the full television timeout, so he stays away from the huddle. Dives in with about 40 seconds to go. Granger at the line. Shoots another. Iowa State very aggressive normally. They get to the line a lot. They average making 18 out of 24 per game. They've held their opponents to an average of 10 of 13, but Michigan State has been perfect at the line tonight. And they have closed to within one with 7.52 to go in the game. Well, as you look at the game summary, this enormous rebounding edge for Iowa State, 
countered by the turnovers. They've got 16 to 7. We've got 8 uh, 7.52 to go, Bill. We've got an Iowa State team. They've never been this deep in the tournament. Michigan State trying to get back to the Final Four for the second time in as many years. How does that experience play now toward the uh, finish? Well, in the summer, you can't tabulate the toughness, the tough mindedness of a Michigan State. They have a lot of guys who've been there. They understand how to hang tough. And right now, they've taken a nice little run and not a good one there. A little nickel dimer by Mateen. And that's number number four. Oh my goodness, not a good one after the timeout. That changes a lot of the strategy. And he doesn't want to come out. Nope, he's looking at Tom Izzo saying, do not take me out. Tom Izzo is the coach to the player now and says, Mateen, come sit by me. Mike Chappelle will take his place. Uh, you never want to take your quarterback out, but at some point, uh, the wiser head prevails here. And what happens now? The fortune, Charlie Bell haven't played that point. He and Dave Thomas early in the year shared it while Mateen recovered from his foot injury. And now there's not a change in the attitude when this happens. Obviously, it's a down tick from the great pressure that he provides on both ends of the floor, please. Jamal Tinsley shoots one more. Three-point Iowa State lead. There's their thumbs up. They curl off the post. Nice dive by Pillow. Oh, what a great play. You can see the fatigue right now. Iowa State not spacey, not denying the cutters, not in the right position. The assist to Andre Hudson, he looked like a quarterback on that pass. But they can play some offense, though. Uh, Jamal's starting to dominate without Cleves in the middle there. 18 points for Jamal Tinsley. But the answer at the other end is a two-pointer for Mo Peterson. He's too good to be as silent as he has been, stepping up twice now. At the seven-minute mark. Pfizer wants it. Granger over to help if he gets it. They work the ball to the left side to Tinsley's hands. Bell guards it. Nice stuff here by Hudson. Pick and roll. They find Nurse spotting up for three. Oh. Oh. That nurse can give you a lot of headaches. Let me tell you. He just gets the puppy squared up. Underneath, Hudson battling the ball. He was tipped in. I think Granger. Are they going to say no goal? They're going to wave it off. I believe they have waved it off. No basket. You're right. Now, the problem is when was the whistle blown? And it's very difficult with the noise factor here at the Palace. Again, the inability to convert and finish around the rim. And there's good aggressive basket right here. Uh, Tell you what, a lot of things have happened here. Could get locked up for them, of course, <laughs> on the street. Uh, maybe over the back is what they saw as Granger attacked. Stevie Johnson goes to the line. Oops. One, one and one. Fourth foul on Andre Hudson. Cleves and Hudson with four. 55-51. Johnson. Short. Didn't hit anything. Big problem, I think, on the defensive end for Michigan State firm. Granger will play Pfizer. Everybody has to collectively help them a little bit, help him a little bit more. Charlie Bell, the junior from Flint, playing the point in place of Mateen Cleaves, the senior from Flint. Nurse defensively. Mo Peterson. In and out. Pfizer, no. Peterson, floater, no. Forward, Iowa State, and a foul call. Over the top. I think they may give it to Peterson. And you just see the frustration as he got so close, unable to convert. Third foul on Morris Peterson. And let's take a look at the data bank. Most wins by a tournament team in a single season without advancing to the Final Four. Kansas in 1998. Cantrell Horton from Covington, Georgia. Tom is trying to decide when to come with the team. And the guy is going to come in. I think they need a little more physical presence, particularly on the defensive end. 
will keep the team to under five, I would guess. And a gun he off for Jason Richardson. This is, a, as we have said, a very good free throw shooting team, and they get to the line a lot. Horton at 77% has one more. A six point Cyclone lead. Michael Nurse is looking over at you and grinning. That's how casual he is. Number 53. He's relaxed. Having the time of his life. Six to go. Chappelle in and out. Peterson, no. Strong. And a Gagne. He's fouled. Now size one out. Morris Peterson almost able to convert because of the matchups down in the box. A good aggressive play by Al and Agagne getting after it. And this is where Michigan State generally wins the wars. Consistency under the tin to attack and be a presence. Pfizer called for the foul. He picks up his third. Tinsley has three. Two starters for Michigan State with four. And Agagne shoots a free throw. It shoots one more. Anna Gagne, Cleves, and Hudson with four fouls. Shirley on the bench with four. Tinsley and Pfizer on the court with three. What long moments these must be from a team Cleves. Oh, absolutely. He's just hoping they can stay within hailing distance and here. Uh, running that. Did they give him a timeout? No. Did they going to give it to him? Yep. Wow, what presence. A lot of people don't like that rule, but he did have control. And a technical foul on Tom Izzo. This is one of those. He's in the air over the line. That's one of those. I don't know if they, they gotta get, make sure Tom gets in. I didn't see why they called a technical other than if they came over the coaching box. When they get the two, they would have had the ball anyhow, Vern. 5.49 to go in regulation, 57-52. When Larry Eustachie was an assistant coach, a volunteer assistant coach at Mississippi State, he met that beautiful woman, Stacy Eustachie. She was a volleyball player at Mississippi State. Married for 13 years and the mother of Larry Eustachie's two sons. Betty Boyd and Bob Boyd just to the side. Mateen Cleaves back on the floor with four fouls. Cantrell Horton shoots the technical. Bob Boyd, longtime coach at Southern Cal and the mentor for Larry Eustachy, hired him after a phone call at his home in Del Mar, California. Larry Eustachy asking for a chance. And he certainly took advantage of it. Of course, Bob said he paid him in the dark. It was very dark. Had him stay with him on the road because they couldn't afford an extra room. And right now, Horton able to make those two free throws. Well, Michigan State, they've got a second up right now on the defensive end. Granger on Pfizer. Tinsley kicks it out to Nurse. Mateen Cleaves guards Jamal Tinsley. I think he should take him with the dribble, see if he can cause the, the next foul. Cantrell Horton, that boy, he's been a force today. He got away with a dig. Oh, my goodness. Three second call on Shirley. But. I thought Horton and Cantrell got a little too deep. Got the puppy shuffling. And what happens, you had a three second the first play of the game, nothing until now. And that's why you saw Larry, you Stacy so upset. Now Cleves. Granger from way outside. Upside. And Cleves took the hit. Marcus Pfizer ran right over him. Well, you find out what you got under the shirt. Pfizer gets a belly from Granger, the return pass. Help from Engane. Off the glass, count the basket, put Marcus Pfizer at the free throw line. Well, how do you beat a double team, Vern? Just be bigger, stronger, and tougher. Uh, but a deep three here. You can see Pfizer with the discard. Nylon from deep by A.J. Granger. But the double up in the box, I mean, this is just raw power, kiss, delight. I mean, he just overpowered two people. Extraordinary. 
He is a junior from Arcadia, Louisiana, by way of Inkster Road in Detroit. Oh, my goodness. Well, I guess they didn't teach you how to stand up in mechanical engineering. Lane violation after a three-point violation for Paul Shirley. He uh, fell into the lane. Well, he didn't get an A for standing there. Two over Zealous. Back it comes to Peterson. Came it, and he wanted it. Step it up. And Granger ran it down a nice kickback. Cleaves out on Tinsley. Oh, oh. the tip, no good. Here comes Cleaves on the run. Nurse is back. Cleaves jumper off the front rim. Two guys. Two too many. Yeah, nice attack. And that one, the team getting into the rhythm of the game may have. Hurried it just a little bit. Sometimes patience, you know, you got numbers against you, hold it up. Michael Nurse will bring it across the timeline. Gets oh a pick from Pfizer. Bad. bad foul. Not a smart foul. I mean, what's going to happen out there? It's a slide by the one to the knee, underneath for Charlie Bell. Not a good one by the big fella. Get it, get your fouls under the rim. Uh, just a little leg extension got him in trouble. 80% on the foul line. Shot him out. Shoots two. Well, you like to go to war with guys who know how to step up. Cyclones lead the Spartans by one with four to go. You can see where they get their toughness, Michigan State. Did you see Izzo in the background there? Pfizer back to Horton. Get him down low right now with Granger. Got Granger. Here's the entry pass and the double. Nice the kick to Shirley. Good the foul. Oh, they got a difference of opinion here. Yep. Difference of opinion. And uh, they're going to say a block. And you know what, Vern? I think it was. And Tom Izzo to try to contain it the other end. They don't want to. One's going to say I had it first. That this could be one of those possession arrow situations, Vern, if they say, let's see what they do. They're going to give it both ways. Right here, you're going to get the dive by Shirley. His ability and still moving, I thought. A bang, bang, and the double foul possession arrow goes. That's exactly what the call was. And that's an area where you love one official to say, I got it first. Double foul. Paul Shirley's fifth. Time is called. Possession arrow, Iowa State. Well, Vern, it's a real bang bang play. Shirley's going to dive over here. We're going to get the official calling the charge. Bell's going to move in. A double foul situation. Possession arrow going to Iowa State. Now that's a bang banger. I initially thought, and we're just going to see this now. Watch the step up, and then we're going to have a gathering as both officials, Lonnie Dixon from the left, Frank Bazzoni made the charge call. Paul Shirley. The possession arrow, Iowa State. Charlie Bell picked up his fourth foul. Paul Shirley, his fifth. He's out of the game. And they go matchup, particularly with, let's see what they did. They got Granger down on Pfizer in the matchup. Zoned by Hudson in the rear. Nurse with a runner in the lane. No, too strong. Andre Hudson chases it down for the Spartans. Cleaves guarded by Nurse. A little flare for Peterson. 
Granger gets it back to Cleves. And now the two seniors from Flint, Cleves and Peterson, born 12 days apart in 1977. Off the dribble, Charlie Bell also from Flint. Michigan State leads. And how about the organization skills of Mateen Cleve? The initial set broke down. He called for the high pick, turned the corner, the delivery. Drive draw. Yeah. Tinsley looks for the pick from Johnson. Now the entry pass, Pfizer. Double, nope, rebound, Hudson. What a nice job by Hudson to go tall and not foul. I think Tom may want a timeout here. Let's see. Tom Izzo calls it. Tom Izzo got it. 2.17 to go in regulation. So now they go match up here. What we're going to see is the high side, then we're going to see Hudson looking to help. It's all the match, and now being as tall so that you don't initiate contact. Verticality maintained. The rebound in Hudson has been magnificent. 2.17 to go. Team fouls 12 and 11. Iowa State with two timeouts left. Michigan State with three. The Spartans have the possession arrow. 2.15 remaining. A little double for Peterson. It's the same play they ran earlier. Turn the corner and look. Nice back. Leaves out of here. and go. How about the Hawks? Pfizer for three. Bell on the floor. Got it. Great rebounder for guard. I still think you got to run your offense now if you're Michigan State. Don't delay too long. Get them organized. 15 seconds, start your offense so you don't get stuck with a stressful jump shot. Cleves pump fake. Back to Peterson. So now they got a second chance because they started early. Five on the shot clock. Foul called. I believe it was uh, Michael Nurse with the body. Well, when you call a timeout, you got to have organization and understanding. This is just incredible. This setup off the timeout by Thomas. Uh, the fake like you're turning the corner. Now look at this catch, the coordination. Send it in, Mo P. The Flintstones above the tin. Now that's just extraordinary ability, but more so the call, the ability to manufacture. His mom, Valerie, and his dad, Robert Morris, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Got to score quickly, Vern. Pick and roll. Off the glass. Oh, what a rebound. In the lane, threw it up deliberately on the glass. Spartans, the team cleaves the style by Michael Nurse. <laughs> Thursday night, Michigan State held Syracuse scoreless in the last five minutes and 55 seconds. Tom Izzo's team is on an 11-0 run right now. And Vern, with 11.50 to go, I wrote a note to myself, 48-40 Mateen time. They started to run their offense. Counter that, Iowa State rushed a couple of jumpers. Look at the help defensively. Nurse for three. Yeah, oh, is he tough? A little my little guy. Michael Nurse cans a three. Timeout. Iowa State.
Spartans up by a three, 44.2 remaining in regulation. The CBS Sports Line stat of the game for only the second time this season, Michigan State is going to be out rebounded in a ball game. The other time, Wisconsin, they won that one. Uh, Michael Nurse, this is not what you'd call home here, but making a house call. The deep, the presence of mind to call after the three, the knockdown shot, and oh, the worst seat of all. You're in anguish for your hubby. Lupe Izzo married Tom Izzo in 1991. Best man in that wedding was Steve Mariucci, the 49er coach. Here's Cleves. Mariucci told Tom Izzo today, I've got an appointment tonight at a high school. I'm not getting there until this game is over. He's watching in the Bay Area. Well, he's still there then. Uh, nice giveaway, maybe a little quicker by Iowa State. Stretch the game. Uh, there's a, this was a high level of involvement. I mean, both clubs, both coaches, you can see the tape work, the analysis, the preparation. And time to go before they sleep. Morris Peterson shoots two. My, how far he has come since his first year at Michigan State. Sat out as a medical red shirt his first year, broken thumb. His mom played basketball, Valerie, at Mississippi Valley. She called Tom Izzo midway through Moore's second year and said, Coach, talk to my son. He ain't playing any defense. <laughs> well, he's playing a lot of offense now. He broke that wrist three years ago, and boy, it changed his whole career. Quick hits, and you got to help. Don't foul, and obviously you want to challenge the jumper from here. Don't give this little guy, Michael Nurse, any room. Making him use time. Cantrell Horton launches one. No. Back to Pfizer. Off the mark. And I believe it was Pfizer. Oh, they got a technical foul. Oh, don't worry. No, 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 no. Please. Where are the assistant coaches? Where are the assistant coaches to calm them down? They should have been right behind them, Vern. And now he's out of the game, Vern. Two technical fouls and a class act going over to both Tom Izzo and Mateen. Please, but your assistants must get up and protect. Terry Carroll and Leonard Perry just in amazement sitting there. And what a shame to leave a game with this flavor and this taste. Sad ending to a marvelous year for Iowa State. Oh, Vern, that takes the heart out of me. I mean, it really, it, it, one of the terrific performances by a staff and a team, and you can just see Stacy. You know, you want it so much as a coach. The four fouls now plus the ball, but to me, I'm perplexed. I mean, I think it's your responsibility as an assistant coach to get after your guy and help him in times of crisis. I mean, it, you just want so much. And I'm sure they were in shock, in fairness to them. Uh, this is the one that they felt there was a, a legitimate foul on the, the long jumper. And Pfizer really got over the top. But I think it's just a build up. You see it's over and that dreadful feeling overcomes you and you lose a little control. Foul was called on Michael Nurse, his fifth. Marcus Pfizer, the junior. Andre Hudson, who's had a splendid game tonight. The one national championship won by Michigan State. Magic Johnson, Greg Kelser, Jay Vincent. The head coach then was Judd Heathcote. They are going back to the final four. They will be favored to win the national championship. Will this be the last game for the junior at Iowa State, Marcus Pfizer? And you look at Tom Izzo there, a no-nonsense guy. He demands, he's got deep feeling, compassion. 
a great work ethic, a firm hand, and really some total love and concern for his team. But this is just almost like it's, it took the air out of you for Iowa State. And a magnificent effort under duress by Michigan State as they came back to seal this one. They were the preseason pick of many to win the national title. They lost to Team Cleves for the first 13 games. Lupe Izzo, their five-year-old daughter, Raquel, that's the contrast with the emotional state of Stacy U. Stacy right now. Uh, letting all the starters get a round of applause. And but when it sinks in, it's terrible. The Cyclones of Iowa State, picked by many to finish dead last in the Big 12. They win their first conference championship since 45, but they fall short here and lose to the top seed, Michigan State. Yet again, the scoreboard will not tell the story. The final margin, 11. Mateen Cleaves, Morris Peterson, A.J. Granger, the three seniors, still have a dream alive. Just a, just a wonderful game, and, and I'm, I'm left speechless, somewhat burned by the way it ended for Iowa State. Michigan State will advance to Indianapolis. They will take on Wisconsin for the fourth time this year. They beat them twice in regular Big Ten play, again in the Big Ten tournament. They get Wisconsin next Saturday. Players of the game for Chevrolet. Michael Nurse for Iowa State with 17 points. Andre Hudson, 17 points and 11 rebounds for Michigan State. score 75 64 Spartans win their 30th Greg and Clark and Bobby Crimmins in a moment back in New York remind you coming up next here on CBS it's early edition followed by Walker Texas Ranger 75 64 Michigan State over Iowa State let's take you back to the palace at Auburn Hills Vern Raft Vern Lundquist and Bill Raftery all right thank you Greg welcome back to the palace no happiness here, Tom Izzo. Congratulations. This is as good as it gets, Vern. I uh, say hello to my buddy Mariucci out there, but this is as good as it gets. Now tell Steve he can go to his high school function. That's right. You can go there, but I'm really proud of these guys. I mean, they, they hung in there. It looked like we were tiring a little bit. We forced a couple shots. But I'll tell you what, they really gritted it out, and we got a lot done in the last five minutes. Billy? I know the guy that makes you a heck of a coach. He's right behind you here. He is a coach. Uh, but see, uh, for the foul problems, were you concerned that you would be able to get back in and dominate like you did earlier? Uh, well, really, I, I did get a little tad bit nervous, tell you the truth. But, you know, Morris and Andre and those other guys stepped it up, and they've been doing it all year. So once I went out, I was a tad bit concerned, but those guys stepped it up like they've been doing all year. The other night you said three more games. How many are left? Two more. And what are you going to do? <laughs> Hopefully we can win them. We're going to win them, baby. Congratulations. Thanks Congratulations to the Spartans. The dream lives. They'll play next Saturday against Wisconsin. Congratulations, Tom. Greg and Clark and Bobby Crimmins when we come back. Busy day in hoops today. Here's what happened in the West Regional Final in Albuquerque. Wisconsin moves on to the Final Four with a 64-60 win over the Purdue Boilermakers. In the game just completed in Auburn Hills, Michigan State, the number one seed in the Midwest Regional, champions of the Midwest, 75-64 over Iowa State. You can't say enough about this game, guys. Emotion, seesaw, back and forth. Bobby, it had everything. It was a great game. Michigan State has the heart of a champion. I uh, hate to, hated to see the end in the way it ended, Greg. 
but uh, what a game. Yeah, Clark. Yeah, they clearly have shown with their ability to come back and win a variety of different ways and different styles. They clearly are, I think, the most versatile team in the, co in the country. And, and obviously, they do a great job of maintaining themselves and doing whatever they need to do to get a win. Big plays from a lot of people tonight. So Michigan State in Indianapolis will play Wisconsin. They are 3-0 and against the Wisconsin Badgers this season. They beat Iowa State the final 75 to 64. One news item to report to you this evening. St. John's University has confirmed this evening to CBS that sophomore guard Eric Barkley will forego any further eligibility and will declare himself leaving St. John's and headed for the professional basketball world. That'll do it for us this evening. We have a full day scheduled for you tomorrow at noon Eastern time. CBS Sports Spectacular Power Street Legends Cup followed at one by the Chevy S10 U.S. Snowboard Grand Prix. And then Clark, Bobby and I will be here for the road to the final four at 2 p.m. Eastern time, followed by the South Final from Austin at 240 North Carolina against number seven seed Tulsa. And then about 5 p.m. Eastern time, the East Final from Syracuse, Florida against Oklahoma State. The five seed against the three seed. We look for a day tomorrow as entertaining as the one today. We appreciate you being with us. And for all of us here at CBS Sports, I'm Greg Gumbel. Congratulations to the Badgers and the Spartans. We'll have more tomorrow. See you then.